In this video, let's see the most intuitive explanation for why centripetal acceleration has a V square over R in it. So imagine a car moving along a circle with a constant speed. Let's pause the movie when the car comes to point A. Let's wait for a small time for the car to come from point A to some point B. Now to calculate how much the acceleration is, we need to first be able to visualize the change in the velocity. Can you visualize that just by looking at this picture? Here, let me help you. So at point A, the car's velocity was pointing this way. Now at point B, it has turned and it's pointing in that direction. Therefore, the green arrow mark represents how much the velocity has turned or how much it has changed. So the green arrow mark represents the change in the velocity. We'll call it as delta V. Now we're ready to tinker with the speed of the car and the radius of the circle and see how acceleration depends on them. Let's begin by tinkering with the speed. Let's say we double the speed of the car. What will happen to our change in velocity, delta V? Well, first, because the speed is double, the velocity vectors now become double in size. And so immediately, you can see that the change in velocity delta v also increases, and I'm guessing it also doubles in size. But we're not here to do guesswork. We can do more than that. Can we compare the new delta v with the previous delta v? Sure, we can just look at the two triangles. If you look at this small triangle, we find that all its angles are exactly equal to the corresponding angles of the big triangle which means these two triangles are similar triangles. Their sides must be in the same proportion. But we know this side of the big triangle, which is the new velocity vector, is twice as big as before. Therefore, all the other sides of the new triangle, big triangle, must also be twice as big as before. Therefore, this side, which represents the new change in the velocity, should also be twice as big as before. So yeah, indeed, the change in velocity has also doubled. And at this point, we might say, aha, therefore, the acceleration must also be double, right? Well, remember, acceleration is not just change in velocity, it's change in velocity divided by the time taken for that change. Remember, it's a measure of how quickly the velocity is changing which means we have to look at the time taken for the car to go from A to B as well. So let's do that. What happens to the time taken when we double the speed of the car? Well, now the car is going twice as fast as before, which means the time it takes should reduce to half as before. Now we can put it all together and see what happens to our acceleration. We have twice the change in velocity, in half as much the time, which means you can see the acceleration actually increases four times, or two square times as before. Oof, can you see where that square is coming from? But before we start celebrating, to convince ourselves, let's take one more case. Let's see what happens if you were to now triple the speed of the car. Now would be a good time to actually pause the video and see if you can go through all the chain of thoughts yourselves and arrive at what the new acceleration is going to be. Go ahead, pause the video and give this a try. Okay, so just like before, now that the speed is tripled, which means the velocity vectors also become thrice as big as before. And similarly, the change in velocity will also be thrice as big as before. And I'm sure you can convince yourself of that yourself. Same methods, we can use similar triangles. So delta V becomes thrice as big as before. And what happens to the time taken to go from A to B? Well, now since the speed is tripled, the car goes thrice as fast as before, which means the time it takes will be one third as before. Putting it all together, the acceleration is, we have three times the change in velocity in one third the time as before, giving us nine times more acceleration or three square times more acceleration. 
So right in front of your eyes, you can see that the acceleration is proportional to V squared. And where is that square coming from? Well, when we increase the velocity by some amount, not only does the change in velocity increases by that same amount, but we also find that the time taken decreases by that same amount. These two factors combine together to give you that square. Now let's look at how it depends on the radius. Now let's double the radius of the circle and see what happens to our acceleration. So the radius doubles. Let's now look at what happens when the car goes from A to B over this big circle. And my question to you is, what do you think happens to delta V? Does it increase, decrease, stay the same? Can you visualize it? Can you pause and check yourself? All right, because the car is traveling through exactly the same angle as before, what we find is that the velocity vector is also turning by exactly the same angle as before, which means the change in the velocity delta V would be exactly the same as before. So since delta V is not increasing, we can say the change in delta V or increase in delta V is just one. It increases one times. So we can get rid of delta V. We don't have to focus on it because we know delta V is not changing as we increase the radius. But what about the time taken to go from A to B? Well, now, since the big radius is twice as big as the small radius, we know that the distance AB will be twice as big as the old distance AB. But remember, our car is moving with the exact same speed as before. We're not changing the speed now, which means the time taken for this car to go from A to B would be twice as much as before. So putting it all together, how does radius affect the acceleration? Well, we have the same change in velocity as before, but it's happening in twice as much time as before, so the acceleration becomes half. Similarly, what happens if we triple the radius? Well, again, as the car travels from A to B, the delta V will be exactly the same. So the increase in delta V, we would say is one. But now, since the radius is thrice as much as before, the distance AB that the car has to travel is thrice as much as before. But it's traveling with the same speed, so the time taken would be thrice as much as before. And when we put it all together, we see the effect of tripling the radius on the acceleration is we have the same change in velocity as before, but in thrice as much time as before. And so the acceleration becomes one third. And so you can see that the acceleration is proportional to one over the radius. And why is that happening? Well, because when we increase the radius, we find that the change in velocity is unaffected, but the time taken for that change increases by that same amount, and therefore the acceleration decreases by that same amount, giving you the acceleration proportional to one over r. There we go, an intuitive explanation for why acceleration has a v square over r in it. In this video, we'll clarify all the confusions between centripetal and centrifugal forces.